I, I don't want to pay attention to the metas, right? I, I want to see them rest. I, I don't want to pay attention to Amazon tomorrow. I want to see it rest. I, I like names that are coming at the bottom of the channel that got beat up, right? That's the whole point, that got beat up. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great week weekend. Hope everybody had a great uh, trading day today. I, I just realized like three, four minutes ago, the Dow was down 400 points. Right, we'll get to that in a second. As always, guys, we would live, always love uh, to continue to uh, give you uh, as much value as possible. The only thing we ask in return, drop a like. And if you are uh, brand new uh, to this channel, uh, please subscribe. Again, we try to give you as much unbiased uh, value as possible. We go where the value goes, not where our opinion lies. And that's the most important thing. Uh, if you look at the tape today, like I said, like you know, literally 30 seconds ago, I had no idea the Dow was down 400 points. I, I, I understood uh, the Goldman earnings, I got all that part, but there was so much strength and continues to be uh, so much strength in the NASDAQ 100 names that sometimes the scoreboard is just the scoreboard. And that's kind of what we always talk about. The scoreboard is never gonna give you the value you look for. It's just the guide and it's kind of giving you the overall appearance of what happening or what's happening or currently happening where it's going to happen in the market but obviously individual stocks and your overall research uh the night before is going to make uh to make it or break it uh if you are uh you know trading on a day-to-day -day basis and if if you haven't uh, if you have still any doubts uh of of where the market is and how strong the market is let, let me give you guys some 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 pretty good headlines microsoft this morning got downgraded right it was down three and a half four dollars this morning the stock went green goldman sachs right goldman sachs today was down at one point over 30. okay the market again nasdaq d doesn't care right tesla finally broke out again we'll get to individual pivots in a second finally got above the range with some pretty aggressive call buying again We'll get that in a second. But if you're still unsure, just look at all the small cap garbage. And I say garbage in the nicest way. Of course, we all know that the leaders of Wall Street are AMC and GameStop. And of course, if you haven't, you know, any of that, you have BBBY that's going bankrupt. But the point is you can see everything is flying. Speculation money is flowing. You got Bitcoin still flying. You got cryptocurrency still flying. Even on days that the, the rest of the market leaders are taking a breath, right? Like Meta, for example, took a breath. Netflix, for example, right? Netflix, for example, had a big run, took a breath. Uh, Amazon today took a breath. But the point is the market continues to go higher. And if you watched uh, the video over, well, over the, week, over the weekend, uh, we kind of talked about the next measure potential, uh, which is going to be this 83 level. And that's exactly where we got rejected to off the highs. But the market continues to price improve and is doing exactly the same thing that's been doing now for the last uh, five sessions. Here's a low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher highs all across the board. Uh, now the big number uh, going for the NASDAQ. And again, yeah, you know, it might, you know, it might catch a breather in the next couple the next day or so. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it would be healthier for the NASDAQ to kind of pull in. But even if the NASDAQ is weak on the day and, and the, you know, predominantly the whole morning, uh, we were red, right? We were red the whole morning. It doesn't make a difference. The longer we continue to base and build above the 50-day moving average, we're getting more and more names that are reclaiming their own uh, individual 50-day channel. So is it possible the, the NASDAQ rests tomorrow? Sure, but there's so much value. We'll give you, and I'll give you guys uh, some, uh, some potential watches for tomorrow that are coming off the bottom channels, and that's where you're getting your biggest moves, that it doesn't make a difference with the scoreboard. Is. Again, just ask the people today, if you, if you poll traders today and you say, was the market up or down today, you're gonna have two different responses. Number one, you got people say, what do you mean? The market was down, it was down 400 points. I had no idea till again, till about 10 minutes ago, the NASDAQ, very, very strong stocks continue to build, uh, continue to, to really get aggressively over the prior channels. And the most important thing is, again, you're starting to see, or you continue to see incredible amount of speculation money. They're, they're literally taking up 
all the garbage, right? And again, if you are a small cap trader, and I'm not big, uh, I'm not a big uh, small cap trader anymore. Uh, I do, you know, do things from time to time uh, on option flow. Like for example, grab. Uh, you know, I've been talking about this grab for three weeks. It feels like it's been three months, but it's been three weeks. Finally broke out today. Uh, again, actually continuation breakout on the Bank of America upgrade. But if, if you see the, the true nature of what's going on in the small cap sector, you guys have, a, you know, for all you guys who exclusively trade the small cap names, you guys have like a two to three window to really, really maximize these moves because they're gone after this, okay? As, as much as, uh, as you think these stocks are never going to stop, again, we all know, again, I, I used to swing trade small cap stocks for years. I used to have an inventory book for years and eventually I stopped because it stopped working. Uh, you're getting about two to four weeks a year that they're going in bananas. We're like in middle of what, second weeks, uh, two and a half weeks into this. So hopefully you guys are capitalizing on the smaller names. Uh, and I bet you in about a week from now, two weeks from now, they're gonna start slowing down. And eventually all the stocks are going up a dollar, two dollars, three dollars are going up two, three, four cents. And unfortunately, that's the seasonality function of the small cap market. Again, traditionally, uh, they're very, very strong during January, as they call deem it, uh, the January effect. So if you are a small cap trader, hopefully uh, you guys are uh, doing really, really well uh, in this uh, cyclical move uh, with the small cap names. Other than that, again, uh, business as usual, um, some really good value. And again, going into tomorrow's session, I, I do think maybe, uh, you know, you get one more day of rest from like a Meta or an Amazon or a Netflix, just because they had such really magnificent rule moves. They're the ones who really led this rally before we reclaimed the 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ 100. Those names, I want to watch them back testing into the five-day rising support. If you guys watched, uh, have been watching this video for a long time, you know how in the importance for me, at least, the five-day moving average is. It's, it shows you who has uh, the control over short-term sentiment. Right now, the bulls do. And if you look at names, for example, even like the Qs, and maybe I'll mirror the Qs, right? I'd like to see the Qs come back to this orange line. You see every single time what happens when the Qs get into the orange line, hits the orange line, bounces, hits the orange line, bounces, hits the orange line, bounces. So it's actually healthier if we could get a, a pullback if, again, it's not gonna make a difference. Again, the value is clearly still on the upside, but even if we do get a, 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 a back test tomorrow uh, in the indexes, I still have so many names that I'm watching that could potentially uh, clear out their own and start reclaiming their own channels uh, for tomorrow. And the same thing, if you look at Amazon, right? I'd like to see a move into this orange line. Again, that's the five day. You can see here, five day bounce, five day bounce. We're looking for one more five-day bounce here as well. So, so far, the no one, if you, go, if you go through the NASDAQ 100 charts, uh, you can you can uh, you find some really good value. So, let's start off with Tesla, right? We, we've, been, we've been watching this channel. If you watched uh, last night's video, the weekend video, we talked about the last couple of days or the last week or so that they kept on coming back with bad news. Like for the latest... Uh, PR that was uh, not great was the fact that they cut their models, right? They cut their models, slashing prices 6 to 20%, and they couldn't get the stock down, right? Couldn't get it up, but couldn't get it down. That's what she said. So we were, we were just waiting for it. It was just a matter of time. They're either going to take down the bottom of the channel or take the, took up the, the top of the channel. They finally confirmed the top of the channel here. Uh, the initial move was only a little, little less than $2. Then it finally started getting healthier, getting healthier. And then they started coming with some really, really aggressive call buyers. Uh, they were coming for their 132, 133, 135, and some 140 weeklies. And you can see here, this is the highest close in this whole formation. This is the first time we closed uh, above the 20-day moving average in a very, very long time. You would have to go back to, geez, let me see. Here we didn't close, here we didn't close. Uh, man, oh man, oh man, this is far. You'd have to, man, you'd have to go back to like September the first close above the 20 day moving average. And this is exactly what we had here. I would love to see a day two run. I think a lot of you guys would love to see a day two run as well. If it could confirm today's channels, I mean, look how much room we have, and especially if this market continues to push. Again, there's no bigger, you know, there's no bigger runaway train. When this thing gets going, this thing really gets going. Again, first close uh, above the 50 day moving average since September. So there's a lot of upside. Let's hope for uh, a day to move. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about some pivots and then I will give you guys uh, I will give you guys uh, some some ideas that I like for tomorrow coming off the bottom of the range instead of the top. Obviously, Tesla 
would be you know the top watch for anybody who is not long uh but here it is a so grab you know we've been in this thing for like three weeks uh, grab upgraded today maybe finally starts the next leg up for those who are still in the trade it's been two weeks i feel like it's more like three weeks uh it feels like two years we were joking around but here was grab uh we started buying this thing into that and, and this is my point about uh, very selective into small cap stocks. Here's another one. Uh, here's the reason we started buying this thing into the 140s because it finally took out this whole supply that were coming uh, for some uh, short term uh, out of the money calls. But it finally broke out. Uh, it broke above uh, the high from two weeks ago, 381 traded all the way into the fours. Hell, maybe this thing has another push into the mid fours. Beautiful, beautiful move. Again, just a runner there. Uh, Tesla again, uh, 126 needs to establish a new base to potentially squeeze and again it's squeezing right that's exactly what tesla does when it confirms big macro levels it squeezes here's the whole channel we talked about in nausea uh 126 confirmed again highest close since september uh above the 30 above, above the 20-day moving average and you can see here after hours uh it's up you know it's up almost another dollar uh again i think there's a shot if this thing really gets going could be a mother multiple day move so if there is any weakness tomorrow at the open let's see if there's a, let's see if they could trap shorts in the bottom range and the rising 60 minute support if not opening range highs uh this should get going uh amazon didn't quite get to uh the, the top of the range stopped right in the 98 uh, 85s it deserves a rest it really does uh it, it it really really deserves a rest i still believe this thing's gonna see 100 102 but again needs one or two days rest uh, CRM traded a couple of shares literally uh, above the 150 level. It kind of stood there the whole day, did nothing. What can you say about NVIDIA? Talk about runaway trains. This is why we continuously talk about the same stocks over and over and over again. Again, you, you, you have to know uh, their, 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 you know, the way they trade, their tendencies, their personalities. And NVIDIA has been an absolute monster. Uh, fantastic trade at 169.50 is just a continuation from last week. I did not see it going up another $7 today, but a beautiful move. I mean, I was very, very surprised uh, and shocked at the move. So it took out the 69.50 and just went out of its mind. Look at this move here. Took out the 69.50 and just pretty much closed at the highs at 177. Just a crazy, crazy move there. And da, 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 da. MRNA, again, here's another one. 192 needs to build. Not a huge move. It actually reversed, but went up to about 195. Uh, you know, went to about 195 and then reversed down a little bit here. Uh, Starbucks broke out, you know, only went up about 30 cents. It's kind of the highest close though in its whole formation. And here's the video take sales at 173. That was supply traded all the way up to uh, 77. Uh, Amazon, uh, I still like the bounce. It's, it, this, this number is going to change for tomorrow. Uh, but that's about it. You know, that's about it. So the key for tomorrow, again, I don't want to pay attention to the metas, right? I, I want to see them rest. I, I don't want to pay attention to Amazon tomorrow. I want to see it rest. I, I like names that are coming at the bottom of the channel that got beat up, right? That's the whole point, that got beat up, uh, that are it's putting themselves in a situation that if it starts confirming their bottom channels, it could wake up. So let, let me give you guys some ideas uh, for tomorrow. Look at Square. Check out this. Look how long. First of all, this is the highest close in this whole formation here. Look how close this thing is from breaking out of November highs. I mean, you're talking about now November, December, Jan. You're talking about three, almost three months, three full months of, of consolidation. If Square gets up above this top of the channel here, this thing could roll. Keep an eye on that. A couple of names that are coming also uh, on the bottom channels. Look at Pan W, right? Look at Pan W today. Look, at, look how it closed. Again, it's not sexy, right? Nobody's going to turn around sexy. But this thing might be like a day or two away. It kind of reminds you, doesn't it kind of remind you of the Tesla chart, right? The 20 day supply, right? So check this out. If, if, if Pan W could just get above this whole channel here, maybe this thing wakes up. And another name in the same group of that whole cloud software is Crowd, right? Look how close Crowd is. If Crowd can just complete and can just really reclaim this top of the channel here, maybe this thing wakes up and gets into the 112 level. Obviously, uh, obviously, I love uh, Tesla if it could confirm uh, tomorrow's session. And let me give you guys a smaller name. Look at Palantir, right? Palantir is very, very close to confirming the 50-day moving average. And the reason why I bring this up, they were coming for the 750s, a little bit longer uh, distribution, excuse me, a little bit longer expiration. Um, 
for the, for the, for the springtime. Uh, they were coming for the 750s, the, the eights. But keep an eye on this thing. If this thing confirms uh, the 50-day moving average tomorrow, who knows? Maybe this thing uh, goes as well. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Uh, again, for all you guys who are wondering and, and just always on the fence and say, listen, are pivots for me? Do I want to do pivots? I, look, the only way, I, I've been saying this for years, I, I don't believe pivots are for everybody. I just don't. I, I don't think so. I think you have to have uh, a very, very uh, patient mindset. I think you have to be a responsible adult because it's a very, very specific way of trading where the only one's trading. However, uh, if you believe that it's something that could potentially fit your personality, look, kick the tires. You got 30 days in the live webinar. You get all the bells and whistles that come along with the, uh, with the webinar. Obviously, we're not kind of liberty to say what they are. But the point is, for all you guys who know, you kind of know. Most important thing, guys, let's let's be nice and calm for tomorrow. Is it possible we back test? Absolutely. But I do believe we will still continue to get pretty darn good value uh, to the upside. And remember, as the old adage goes, you just need one. Yono, baby. Yono. Have a great night, everybody, guys. I'll see you.